Hello and welcome to Victorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Today I've come to Findhorn to photograph the Findhorn Yacht Club. I want to show you today how we might dial in a new film or a new developer if we quickly need to get it in the ballpark for our zone system. Now I've shown you how to do this accurately in previous videos, but today I wanted to show you the easy zone system, how to quickly dial it in, close enough for government work. It's not as accurate, but let's see how close we can get it. Well, the first thing I need to do is get my film in my camera and set it to box speed. We don't know what speed the film is going to give us with our developer, so that's our first hurdle we have to overcome. I'm going to set box speed on this. I'm using Pan F today, so I'm going to put 50 ISO on this, and I'm going to shoot my roll at 50 ISO. I'll take various different photographs, um, and then once we've developed the film using the standard time for the developer, and if we haven't got a standard time, make a guess. A good guess might be to start with a D76 time. And then we're going to uh, have a look at the negatives and see what they're going to tell us about what we're achieving with this film and this developer. So let's crack on and get these photographs taken. Here are the negatives developed. And you know, looking at them on the light table here, they don't look too bad. But that's not how we're going to do this, because I need to find out, first of all, what film speed, approximately, I'm getting with this film developer combination. This is the easy zone system, so I'm not going to go through all the testing we did before. I'm showing you how to do this uh, quick and easy if you don't have time for all the tests. So I'm going to create a contact sheet, and I'm going to use these areas in between the frames to find absolute black. So I will use two second exposures. I'll increment those two second exposures as I move a cover across them. And I'm looking for when it becomes totally black. Let me do that now and I'll show you what I mean. Here's the first test strip. Here's in between the frames here. And that is called film base plus fog. And I've done a test strip along it. You can actually see in the negative there where I've been moving the piece of card up the negative as I did my test strip. And I've done a couple uh, to, to get this ballpark figure for you to show you this. Uh, and this very first one here was three exposures. And then I added another exposure, another, another, and another. So that's three, four, five, six, seven is the very top and I can see the difference between the three the four and the five and the six but not the seven so that six and I use three seconds in the end to get these so six times three is 18 seconds now we've talked about this before because I've shown you this in previous videos that we can't just put 18 seconds three times six on the timer and do that because it's a different exposure. We have to use these little three second steps to get exactly the same exposure. And that is important. You can't um, take shortcuts around this. Uh, we're already doing shortcuts for the easy zone system. So stick with me here. So we got three, then four, five, six. So six times three seconds. I'm going to give that exposure to the whole of the test sheet of negatives uh, contact onto a piece of paper. And then I'll show you what that looks like because now we're really zeroing in on our film speed. This is very interesting. So bear with me. I'm going to do that right now. Here's the test sheet and I've just used an off cut of paper because I want to show you what I'm looking for here. And it's, it, you'll see this large area of shadow in front of the building. Now, normally I would never have taken a photograph with such a large area of shadow like that. It's uh, distracting from what I'm trying to photograph here. I would have waited for the sun to light this up. But for demonstration purposes, this is perfect. Now look at that shadow. There's hardly any detail in it at all. And that's because it's underexposed. By setting the box speed on the meter, which was 
ISO 50 for Pan F and then developing it in this developer that I've used it is not giving me box speed at all. My shadows are dark and dingy and what I want are luminous shadows that have full gradation within them and I'm not getting that at all. I'm, I'm a good stop out here. I'm going to have to set ISO 32 or 25 for my Pan F to get my shadows in the right place. Now Bruce Barnbaum was the guy who put me onto this um, and he's famous for one of the uh, quotes he says is put your shadows in zone 4. Well I don't believe in putting them in zone 4 but what I do believe is getting the right speed set on my meter for the film and developer combination and then by putting them in the right place they will be higher up above the toe. Let me just show you on a piece of paper what I mean. At the moment our shadows are too dark. Now I used box speed and I placed the shadows here in zone 3 but what's actually happened is the developer has not given box speed for that film and I'm getting my shadows down here. Now there's two problems with that. One is they're obviously too dark. They're going down from zone 3 into zone 2 which is too dark. But the second thing is you'll notice these lines. These are a uh, depiction of the zones as we go up through the film curve. And you'll see that down here at the toe of the film curve they're compressed. Whereas up here on the straight line of the film curve in this area here they're more expanded. In fact they get larger as you get higher up. As the film is developed it pulls these um, steps between the zones further apart. And then of course here in this area here up in the shoulder it compresses them down again. Now with my shadows going down here because of the developer I'm getting compressed gradation. And what I want is more gradation. I want larger steps between my different shades of grey. So I want my shadows at least in zone 3 and even as high as zone 4. So this area here is where I would like them. So I need to increase the exposure of my film and the way to do that is to lower the ISO setting on my meter. I originally used 50 and I'm going to lower the ISO on the meter to 25. That is one stop and that will raise these shadows up into this area here where I'm getting much more gradation. It will also give me lovely luminous shadows. And if I find they're too light in printing, I'll just print them down. The good thing is, I got the gradation because I pushed them up here. So as I print them down, I'll maintain better shadow detail. So that's the plan. Let's go back to the negative and have another look at that. So here's my test sheet again. Let's have a look. There we are. And you can see the shadows are very murky and low in gradation. There's very little there. They're definitely not luminous. That was all lovely pebbles and I can't see them at all. So I need to lower the ISO on my meter. I'll set an EI of 25 for Pan F for my next test. That should bring these shadows right up into a much more luminous area. That's me set my film speed. So next week we're going to see how to set my development time because of course by lowering my ISO I'm going to be over developing this and so I'm going to have to do something about that. We'll see that next week. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you patrons for bringing this to everybody and I'll see you then.